In today's video, we're going to learn about two-way tables. That's where you can display two different categories of data. It's going to be data that's collected from the same source. So you might ask a class of kids two different questions, and from their responses, you'd be able to make a two-way table. So as an example, it would look like this. It's kind of like a grid um, where you've got like a table set up. This says you are surveying students on whether or not they passed the test and whether or not they studied. So each individual entry on your table is going to be called a joint frequency. There is going to be quite a few vocab words in today's lesson, so just make sure that you're paying attention to the highlighted words. So we can see from each joint frequency whether or not a student studied and whether or not they passed. So as an example right here, we have six students didn't study and those six students failed. You could use a different joint frequency and look at 21 students studied and those 21 students passed. Okay, next we're going to look at marginal frequencies. Marginal frequencies are when you add up the joint frequencies within a row or a column. So we are using the same table as before, but then you can see we added up going down your columns and then we also added up going across the rows. Whatever number is in this box right here, when you add up your marginal frequencies, that's going to represent the total number of things you collected data on. So number of people you surveyed, or um, if it's an object, number of objects in your study. Okay, when you, um, after you find them, you can interpret them. So these little bubbles around the sides give that interpretation. So we could look at this and say, out of your 30 students, seven failed. Um, out of your 30 students, 22 of them studied. So it just takes out the um, combination data and kind of lumps it all together. So you can just see studied, not studied, and passed and failed. This is really helpful if you're trying to find a percentage of um, how many people in the class actually studied or what percentage of students failed the test. So that's where you'll use your marginal frequencies along with your total in this box right here. Okay, let's look at a few examples where we actually analyze this and work some out. So you randomly survey students in the cafeteria about their plans for a football game and a school dance. So you're asking them two questions and collecting data on both of them. Two-way table shows your results. We want to know how many students will attend the dance, but not the football game. So we're going to look at for dance, it needs to be a yes. And for football game, it needs to be no. So we could say five students fall into that category. Then for the marginal frequencies, we're going to add some boxes to the side, some boxes below, and then a box for our total. So going across for a 10, 35 plus 5 would be 40, 16 plus 20 would be 36, and then we can go um, down the columns, so this would be 51, and then this would be 25. Your total should match your row, let me highlight it here. So the total should be the sum of those two numbers and the sum of those two numbers. If there's a discrepancy, go back and double check what you did. So this adds up to 76, both horizontally and vertically. So it says interpret. So I could go through each one um, and say that 51 students attended the football game, 25 students did not attend the football game, 40 students went to the dance, and 36 students did not go to the dance. And then again, kind of follow-up questions might start to say what percent of students did attend the, da the dance, and then you could just figure out 40 out of 76 and convert that into a percent. So that would be a follow-up of where um, the next steps would be. 
All right, next one, we have um, three different categories for each thing that was surveyed this time. So we're doing whole school. You asked what was most important, grades, popularity, or sports, and then you made a two-way table out of that. So it says for the first question, how many seventh graders chose sports? So we're going to find seventh graders and sports, and that would be a total of 19 students. Then it says we're going to find and interpret our marginal frequencies. So we'll add some boxes below, some boxes to the side. Should have left myself a little more room. And we will add those up. All right, so to speed that up, I filled all of those in. And then I can make sure that the marginal frequencies column and row both add up to the same thing. And I just double checked, they both add up to 211. So I should have all the correct values in the marginal frequencies spot. Um, so that's finding them. Interpreting would just be going through each of those six numbers and saying what they represent. So for this box right here, I could say 112 students in middle school cared most about grades. 40 cared most about popularity, and 59 cared most about sports. Going through the grade section, I could say 72 students surveyed were in sixth grade, 74 were in seventh grade, and 65 were in eighth grade. All right, and then for part C, this is where we start to see um, percentages. So it says, what percent of students in the survey are sixth graders who chose popularity? So that's going to be looking at a joint frequency. Um, sixth grader who chose popularity, that would be 18 students. That's my joint frequency. And out of the whole survey would be out of 211. So 18 out of 211, when I divide that, I get this value, and then it does go on a little bit. Um, I could go ahead and um, I'm just going to round that to about 9%. So I could say approximately 9%. If I really wanted to, I could say 8.53%. Um, but for this video today, we'll just go ahead and round it to that. All right, hopefully that helps understand two-way tables a little bit more. Um, again, make sure that you're paying attention to the highlighted words. You know what a joint frequency is, and you know what a marginal frequency is. All right, thanks for watching.